today we have a really quick, healthy, and Lent safe meal. If you practice in Lent and you observe it, um, fish is a dish that you'll eat quite a bit, especially on Fridays. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to just put together a really quick, I mean, we go out and buy, when I go to a restaurant, I always order seafood, especially haddock. And it's so easy to make right at home and you can do that very easily. So today we're gonna do some breaded haddock and we're gonna bread it in some panko breadcrumbs, which are really crunchy and yummy. We're gonna make a um, quick side dish of some spinach linguine, with just a little bit of salt and pepper, butter, nothing special, nothing fancy, but pretty and lovely. And then we're going to have a side wedge of iceberg lettuce with some homemade Thousand Island dressing that my mother always served us, and it's a very fond memory as a child. So, very easy recipe. This will take minutes to make, so don't blink, don't go anywhere, because it could be over before you know it. All right, so in this pan, I am starting my oil up because I am going to um, pan fry my fish. Now you could do this in the oven, go right ahead. I'm just gonna pan fry it just because it's fun. <laughs> All right, I have two beautiful pieces of haddock here. And um, both uh, Kevin and Uncle Dean's has fish that you can um, get. Sometimes you probably don't think that they have those things, but they do and just need to ask for them and somebody can direct you there. Um, so I'm gonna season them with a little salt and pepper. And on my back burner, I have some water boiling. Now, if you guys have never had, I'm sure you guys probably have, but um, <clears throat> this is linguine and it's made with spinach. So it's green and it's pretty and it's not, uh, it's still, it's not like complete spinach, but it's colored with, you know, pureed spinach juice. So it's lovely and green and it adds a nice, just nice color, something fun, a little bit more nutrition. I don't know how much more, but probably not a tons and tons. But I'm going to put this in the boiling water and you want to add plenty of salt to that because you want to flavor. Uh, your pasta water, because that is important. I'm going to do that. So, a big handful of salt, and I'm going to put my spinach right in. And this won't take very long at all to get going. All right, so I'll let, let that start to cook. I'm going to have to push it down in a second, though. I can feel that. And it's just like I said, it's just something fun, and you know, you're not. Um, it's the same texture, it's just, it's nice, it's really nice to try some. You've seen the tri-colored pastas, the orange and the, um, the white and then the green, well those are, you know, all flavored, one was carrot and one is flavored with the spinach, so just something fun. Okay, well this oil is smoking hot, so I'm going to put this aside for a second because we're not quite ready for it. Alright, so two dishes here. One is going to be for an egg, which is going to be our binder to help hold our coating on top of our fish. So one egg, I'm just gonna lightly beat that with a fork. I'm gonna add just a tiny tad bit of water. Just a little, just to loosen it up a little bit. I don't want it too thick. And this takes no time at all. I mean, they cook up so fast. You literally brown one side, flip it, and then brown the other side, and it's done. You don't want to overcook any kind of seafood. It's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. Okay, so I put a little flour in this bowl, okay? While well, you're saying flour, I'm using panko breadcrumbs. If you haven't ever tried them, you need to. As you can see, they're very coarse. Um, and you might say, well, if you, you know, get a regular canister of breadcrumbs, you know they're very fine, okay? Well, these are coarse, and they make a really, really crunchy um, coating. And so what's good about that is if you're baking your fish, you know, it's going to give you that same kind of texture that um, you would if you were deep frying something. So it's just really nice. It's a nice, nice thing that's really become very popular lately, actually. So I'm just going to mix the flour and the panko together. You could do the straight panko, but I like the combination of the two. And with all things, you want to season it just a little bit with pepper and my salt. Push my pasta down. There. Okay, that won't take long at all. 
Okay, and a little salt. Okay, I think fish should just be nice all on its own. I don't think it should... I mean, there's places for, you know, lots of seasoning for things, but I'm not doing that today. I just want something really nice and just let the fish flavor come through. Okay, so the oil is nice and hot. I'm going to take my fish and I'm going to dredge it in my egg mixture and then into my panko and flour mixture. Okay, you want to get it nice and coated. So this, these fish are a little large for this. I probably would have used a bigger pan maybe. Or I'm doing two, I'm going to pull out the big one. You know what I mean? Okay. The tail end. Okay, beautiful. And I'm going to put that right in the oil and we'll do the next one. And these are big, big pieces of fish. You could actually cut this in half and it would be plenty of a portion, um, you know, for a nice light meal. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was like, ooh, huh, made a little mess there. All right, let me get this. And of course, with anything you're breading, throw away your breading stuff that can't be reused. Don't want cross-contamination going on here. Okay, get these both out of here. All right. Let me check my pot. Make sure that that's okay. And that's cooking up. Oh, it's so pretty. When do you see this all plated up? It's so simple and pretty, and you can put this together so fast. You have a friend coming over for lunch or something, or invite them over for lunch. You can whip this up in no time, and it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let me check here. That's nice. Not quite yet, though. I'm going to get a bigger spatula. I want to be able to. I don't want to break the fish up. Haddock is pretty durable. It's when you overcook it that it gets really too flaky, and then it starts falling apart. Uh, there's some fish that you know really got to be really careful with it, but haddock's pretty good about flipping and whatnot. Okay. So while that, I'm just going to clean this off. This is bugging me. <laughs> Okay. Good. All right. So the pasta is cooking. The fish is cooking. I know we're almost halfway there. How many minutes is it been? I know this is a quick one, but this is a quick meal. And like I said, you can put this on the table in no time. Oh. Okay, I'm flipping my fish. Woo! Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Here we go. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, it smells yummy in here. Okay, so I'll let you see. It's nice and brown. Lovely. Okay. So I'm going to let these now, literally, the time that it takes for these fish to brown on both sides, it's done. Really, just that quick. Okay, so. One fond memory I have growing up is, and this was very popular actually. Um, I don't know, 60s or 70s, and you just do it. now it's coming back again, and that's serving a wedge of iceberg lettuce on a plate with dressing. And they call it Russian or Thousand Island. And this is really fun. I, people, when I serve this, people just love it. They feel special, though know, you really didn't do much of anything to, um, to prepare it. Just a little bit of wedge of a iceberg lettuce right there. Isn't that cute? Now, to make your own five, Thousand Island dressing is really, really simple. Um, you take, literally take mayonnaise, some ketchup, and a little grated onion, a little salt and pepper. And it's done. It's really simple. It's cost effective. Um, and I have some dressing, actually. I just had a um, family get-together, and I made some for nostalgic purposes. So I have some here. Can you drizzle that over the top? Isn't that pretty? Lovely colors, spring. Now this doesn't really need anything. You could actually put, you know, scatter some croutons or maybe some cherry tomatoes on it or whatever you wanted to do, but it's just lovely. And it tastes... Mm. Woo! I love it. It is so good. Check my fish here. 
This is almost done. It's crazy. Nice. Yeah. All right, let me check my pasta. Oh, this is almost done too. Of course, with this green stuff, we gotta make sure see how close we are. I just got my fork in the pan. I think I did. Ah. Mm. Almost done. Almost done. Get a little crunch up to it. And this fish. Mm. I love fish. This is my favorite thing in the whole world. And I said, I never think about making it at home. Isn't that weird? Like when I go out to a restaurant, that's what I buy is fish. And it was so much cheaper to buy it at home. Okay, that is done. Can you believe that? Lovely piece of fish here. All right. Woo! Put that on our plate. Nice and lovely. Put that over here. All right, I'm going to get cleaned up, and in a few minutes, I'm going to take the pasta out, and we'll finish this meal up. Look at these plates. Yeah, wrapping up quickly. Um, I took the pasta out and drained it. Look how pretty that is. And it's just missing a few items like butter. Put a tablespoon in there. <laughs> and just a little salt and pepper. Again, you can do this um, whatever you want to flavor this with. I just like pasta all by itself. A little salt and pepper, and I think it's lovely just like that. Just mix it around, toss it in. And then you have this beautiful pasta. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, it just adds so much to your plate to just make people think, ooh, I'm having something different. And it's just pasta. If you haven't done anything that special, look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I wouldn't mind having a plate like that. So I'm just going to quickly throw together a really fast um, topping for our fish. And you don't have to. It's beautiful the way it is. But I'm just going to do a little something. I'm putting some horseradish. And some sour cream. And I'm going to chop up some fresh herbs. I have some tarragon here. So tarragon it will be. Mm -hmm. Tarragon has a little bit of a, that uh, licorice flavor to it. So just a little something different. You can use whatever you want. Or you can use traditional tartar sauce. But I'm just trying to get you guys to, you know, get out of your box. That box you put yourself in. Get out of it. Okay. All right. Mix that. And this is nice if you can let this set overnight because a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. You can put mayonnaise in here too. Fine. Again, I'm not going to put a lot on because I like my fish without anything too fancy on it. Isn't that lovely? What a lovely little dish. A quick lunch. It took me all of, what, 15 minutes maybe? Seriously. The water is boiling. The pasta goes in. I cut my wedge lettuce and the fish was just like that. So the only thing left we have to do here is try it and make sure I did an okay job. Oh, look at that fish. See how shiny it is, okay? That's perfect. It's moist. It's not dry. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's perfectly done. It really is. Literally, you're browning it on both sides. In a hot pan, too, so. Try some pasta color. I know this is gonna be good, right? <laughs> How do you mess up pasta? And I'll put in a salt and butter on it, maybe? <laughs> okay, this is going to be messy. I could feel it, so I'll try to turn them around. Mmm! <laughs> oh my gosh! That is good. Okay, this is going to be one of my favorite meals so far. See, I'm not really a complicated gourmet product person. When it comes right down to it, I like simple food. Mm. <laughs> I do appreciate the fancier stuff, but... Mm. 
totally happy with this. This is so good. So try it. You'll love this combination, really, seriously. So I want to thank Dean and Kathy and Uncle Dean's Good Groceries in Waterville. I want to thank Kevin at Joseph's Meat Market and all the guys down there for making this show possible. And um, get out there and uh, frequent their businesses. Show your appreciation for them um, supplying not only the finances to run the show, but also providing the food for it. So until we meet again, hopefully when the weather's a little warmer, um, get out there and feed somebody. We'll see you.